Hello, horror fans. This is Death by Podcast, the ultimate horror movie podcast. I am your host, Adam. That is your other host, Kevin. Episode 60, Kevin. 6-0. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, we are heading, we're almost, we're almost at the end. This today is letter Y, next week letter Z. And then I was, I was going to ask you this off air, but on mm-hmm. air is fine. How do you feel about wrapping up the season with the ending of Stranger Things season four? Yeah, but after it, after the letter Z, we'll do that as our grand finale. For yeah, season. that works. Should we do another like like retrospective on like on all the movies like uh, um, on Stranger Things, like the previous stuff? No, no, no. Like like doing it like last season, we did an episode. Oh yeah, where we, we we did. We were that. like, okay, best you know, like the award to the best you know. Yes, you're right. Worst movie, best movie. This stuff. So why yeah. don't we do? Yeah, why don't we do that? We'll do Stranger Things, and then the grand grand finale will be our best of show for season two yeah that's a good, idea. That's a good idea so we got three more episodes in the season uh this episode 60 is i had the letter y and you know i just went with it the uh, the obvious but the greatest young frankenstein uh this is in my top three all-time favorite movies and i've over the years i've been like it's been like a rotating three and it or like favorites but for the first time i think i can say Breakfast Club, Ghostbusters, Young Frankenstein, and then the rest of the list is all Star Wars. You and I know you love this movie too. I do like this movie. I like it a lot. It's not in my because I didn't see it till I was older. Okay. A lot of the jokes that people love are they're so iconic that you knew them before they did it because these guys did it first. You know. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, I and and I like I and even Mel Brooks did a lot of his the same jokes in this over and over again so like some of the jokes they do it's like i had already seen in like men in tights and space balls and you know his lesser movies but i still i really really like like it it's just a fun good movie yeah it is it is it's the it's the only i've seen this movie more than anything in my life it's because i spent probably a week just having it on repeat in the background for a while but we'll get to that before we get there what do you got you got any news Um, yeah, as far as news, I mean, there's a bunch of like little stupid news, like like post like the poster for Salem's Lot came out and shit like that. But like, was it worth looking at? No, it's it's a silhouette of four kids uh, and and a sign that says Salem's Lot. Were there even kids in the original? I don't. They look like kids. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't it, know what's going on. I'm not worried about it. Kids. Um, I think they put on another trailer for Prey. I am. Oh really? Let I and I heard one line of dialogue from Prey, and I, I'm less excited about it than I was. But it, you know, it, it, who knows? It might surprise me. Fair enough. I'll yeah. watch it and let you know. But there's a shitload of Rob Zombie news as far right, as busted. Uh, what do you got, Rob Zombie? So his, his Instagram, he's been very active. He was putting up, for, he, was, he was putting up T-shirts for like the monster movie, and you could pre-order them and everything. Then he just put up this ominous thing that said something is coming, and it was like a cartoon of a graveyard. The next day, he posted a picture of him and Ozzy Osbourne from 2001. Uh, and then the following day, he followed up on what was coming. It's a music, <laughs> it's a music video that he did, and it's animated. And I watched it, and uh, the name of the song is Shake Your Ass, Smoke Your Grass. And <laughs> I mean, I think the video is fun. Uh, yeah. I think the music, I think you'll hate it more than like anything you've ever heard in your life <laughs> if you listen to the music. <laughs> I think is it like a Rob Zombie song? Yeah. No, I no. mean kind of, but not like not as like fun or catchy. It's kind of weird, but it's the music video is fun. So it's just a song about smoking weed. Kind of, yeah. But like it's and it's dancing. I mean, and the video's fun. He's like, you know, he's doing Rob Zombie stuff. He's riding around like a you know, the a drag- bunch of zomb- Dragula. Yeah, there's like zombies and like you know, like his eyeballs pop out of his head. And so it's it's a bunch of crazy shit. So there was that post, All but right. that's what it was. There was another post about it with like another link, like a different part of the video. And then the another link that was announcing it had 100,000 views on YouTube. And then good uh, for you. <laughs> and then uh, out of nowhere, I think it was today. It might have been like 10 minutes ago. He announced where uh, Eddie News, Eddie News. Oh, about finally. You get, you get your nope, not what you were thinking. <laughs> what? Eddie, it's not it, it's not, you know, where's Eddie? Butch Patrick is in the is in the new movie. Oh, really? Yeah. As the Tin Can Man. The Tin Can Man? <laughs> I don't know that scene or thing. Uh, they show a picture of it. It seems like you could have gotten 
literally anybody because it's just a big metal tin man suit that you can't see any see his face really <laughs> yeah it's it's like big... when it's like when celebrities play stormtroopers you know kind of yeah. yeah i mean yeah they I just want to be on it and i Butch mean Pat- maybe this thing has a voice i don't know but patrick's got a pretty good voice you know does he all right yeah he's how he probably- we told my mother-in-law that uh we were having a uh a baby he did it yeah i remember the story did he do it was, for I, you or something i was at a convention when my mom when my wife told my mother-in-law and i happened to be talking to robert Pat, or butch patrick at the time yeah and then i was like you want to say hello to my mother-in-law like she's a big monsters fan he's like yeah and he made a little like zoom video he's like hey Debbie, how's it going <laughs> it was all, all <laughs> that's awesome the congratulations <laughs> on your little werewolf he was he was he went into full like Casey case of mode man he was I don't, he's cool. I don't know why. So in the original show, Eddie was a werewolf. I don't yeah. know why I thought he was a little vampire boy, but he's a, no, werewolf. It's a werewolf. Okay. It's always remember, been a big debate among like, how, how did that happen? Oh, oh, dang. But yeah. seemingly, I mean, in the, in the movie, he had, the Lily's brother is a werewolf. Okay. So, so do you think like, I mean, I always thought he was a vampire kid for some reason, but. I guess when monsters mix, you got to watch that movie monster club with Vincent price and uh, Car- Carradine, David Carradine. It's, it's like a anthology and they, but they go through the family tree of monsters and show what happens when different monsters mate. It's part yeah. of the movie. It's weird. So I always just thought that like, I don't think they ever put any thought Like, I don't, I, I I'd be willing to bet that when they were making the monsters, there was no writer being yeah. like, wait a minute. It doesn't <laughs> make sense. I think it was like, why don't we? All right. If he's a Frankenstein and she's a vampire, why don't we make their kid a, a werewolf? OK, yeah, um, absolutely. That's exactly. <laughs> like, how it went. We're totally. lucky he wasn't a mummy like, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Is the that, debate that goes on like whether Lily like cheated on Herman with a werewolf? <laughs> maybe. I mean. <laughs> I'm not just I'm not in on these debates, I, but I have heard it brought up. Like, how the fuck does that work? You're over on Reddit or whatever they wherever it is. Well, also, no, I mean, you're wrong. I mean, it is kind of like goofy that if you think about it, these aren't like hereditary traits. It's not like blue eyes. Seemingly, Harmon could have gotten Lily pregnant and then the kid was bitten by a werewolf. We don't right. know. Like, that's probably what happened. Arguably, every one of those characters was human at one point. I, I mean, it would be weird if if Herman, like, it would be weird if he was a Frankenstein kid. That does that makes less yeah, sense, right? Than if than if he's a werewolf. Absolutely, totally. <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> no, totally. Uh, but now I remember him. I remember Eddie walking around with his werewolf toy, like doll, and I forget who they had in the house. It was a guest, and he, Eddie was like kiss werewolf man good night i forget his guest. name yeah yeah i forget what it was uh what else you got any other news no no i want to i want to see this uh this cartoon thing i think i'm pretty sure you're gonna hate it i'm sure i will it's I not mean, it's pretty crude animation too it's just really? like yeah that's weird yeah it's a, and it's not up to his i wouldn't say standard but like his his previous endeavor into animation uh el super bisto yeah is actually very very good animation and it's 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 better than you would than you would expect is this a song that's like off one of his new albums or something i have no idea okay i know he's on tour i think with Mudvayne right now oh wow that's a mess <laughs> uh what you would you watch anything it's our famous okay. segment by the way what'd you watch i watched the orville uh the other night i keep forgetting and you got to remind me to watch that i want to check it out tell you what man this new episode was so good it was like nuts like i was yeah. on the edge of my seat like did you cry? <laughs> no, but I mean, it was it was like intently. What's cool about this season is you really don't know what's going to happen. Like honestly, it's like, are they going to? I mean, it's 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 totally open. It's. I thought it was just uh, a comedy show. No, I know it. It starts off as kind of like Star Trek, but with like jokes. Yeah. And then it like they and they don't ever drop the jokes like, but they it becomes less of a comedy and and more of like a just a good science fiction show. Okay. And it's, 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 it's great. And th- this, this episode, I, there's one scene I'm sitting on the couch and I like audibly went, 
Jesus Christ. And then right <laughs> afterwards, Seth MacFarlane's character looks yeah. at Katie and goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, right <laughs> after, to like, what was going on. In yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Me and Seth MacFarlane had simultaneous reactions to what was happening on screen. It was oh, great. Man, time to reach out. It was Maybe. it was awesome, man. It, it was, was awesome. it's one of those shows too, man. Like, you know how I, I always bitch about you, I don't I don't care what your message is, just do it in metaphor, man. Like, you uh-huh. know, that's that's what writing is sure that's this show like creative, this show, creative, creative writing yeah this show is and it allows you all sorts of opportunities it allows you to show other perspectives that might not even be your own it's great and like sometimes they make the, the, the you don't know if they make the right decision and then it comes to bite them in the ass like three seasons it's great it's so good please yeah i would watch and it only gets better it starts off not rocky it doesn't start off rocky at all but it it progressively gets better. I would say at, with the, every episode, it's quite the endorsement. Seth MacFarlane, if you're listening, reach out, reach dude, out. I, I will do whatever I can to get this show picked up. I'm afraid this is going to be the last season because right. Hulu's not even promoting it. You go on their like home screen and like, I have to search for it every single week. Like I have to go into the search bar and Son, type it in. Sons it's it's like, dude, what are you guys doing? Yeah. What are you, what are you doing? Hulu reach out. You yeah, promote only murders left in the building that they've been in season that, that that season's been over for a year. I need to check that out too. Um, I was watching, <laughs> I was watching Martin short and uh, the Simpsons uh, sheer Harry sheer. Yeah. Do their, do their uh, synchronized swimming. You remember that? <laughs> Have Not you seen well. that? Dude, so. it's from, it's, it's a uh, Christopher guest. It's a Saturday. It's an SNL short from like the eighties and no. or, or like nineties. It's probably like early nineties and Harry sheer and Martin short are brothers that, uh do synchronized swimming and christopher guest is their like coach <laughs> i'll Dude, check that out i'll find it for you i'll send it to you if you watch the orville i'll watch that it's on it's like a three minute thing but yeah i want to watch your is that it what'd you watch yeah i think i watched something else i just don't remember what it is i feel like you don't watch enough stuff i think you need to watch more stuff dude you're telling me it's it's <laughs> it's basically whatever so like yeah this is the uh the gauntlet that like whatever I want to watch has to go through one. <laughs> I have to watch it at eight, like eight 30 because that would, then my kids are in bed and I can, right. I can it's something I want to pay attention to. Yeah. It's like, okay, then it has to get through the gauntlet of like, what kind of mood my wife's in. Like if she wants yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm great. Thankfully I have a cooler wife with like that kind of stuff. Like if I want to watch star Trek, she's like, yeah, fine. Just, I'm going to go get stoned and then I'll watch Star Trek. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's basically the rule, not the rule, but that's her, her, her thing. Yeah. Like it, it, it has to get through that. And then, but if she's like, no, I actually want to like stay up and watch something and I have to find something else. And then she always falls asleep during everything. So yeah. it can't be that long. Wives, man, they all fall asleep. I, I'm, I, I was, you know, I was planning on doing that. Oh, what should I do? I'll tell you what, I'll watch one of these for next week. Either that everything everywhere all at once or, uh, that Nicolas Cage, movie. which Nicolas Cage, the, I think it's called like the unbearable weight of genius or something. It's where he plays himself. Oh, with um, I don't know anything else about it. Those the Mandalorian the two, with the Mandalorian. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mandalorian's in it, yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. I want to see that. See uh, my wife said that was very good. And I've heard very good things about the other one. But All I'm right. going to watch one of those. Fair enough. Uh, what, what did I watch? I watched I mentioned on the Patreon uh beverly hills cop trilogy of which one is it's great it's almost flawless two very good three burn it it's trash it is so it felt like i was watching one of those um like a like a scary movie spoof on a on a buddy cop thing (laughs) the the green the use of green screen in this movie is like hilariously i don't remember any green screen Cause you know, it's in a amusement park. Yeah. So anytime like there's somebody's on a Ferris wheel or there's a action piece and off on a Ferris wheel, it's, or anything it's Eddie Murphy was at that point where he was like way too famous and, and, and didn't want, and didn't, didn't want, want to do take any chances on anything. So it's just, it's, but it's just a terribly written, terribly directed by it's somebody famous and it's, it's just poop, man. It's got the most of uh, your guy in it, though. Who? Judge Reinhold? Oh, no. Bronson Pinchot. Yeah. Yeah, he's in it. He's great. He's great, <laughs> he's great. He's great. <laughs> he's great in everything he does. But this right. is, this is, it's Surge, right? Serge. Serge. <laughs> it's. Ah, well, it's... Folie. <laughs> I ah, do well. kind of, you know, that 
Eddie Murphy's attitude towards him in all three movies. <laughs> yeah. I kind of I've always loved it, even when I was a kid about like because like you wouldn't necessarily think that like Axel Foley would be as like, but he's just like he just gets a kick out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just I think like, it's because I think it's because Pinchot was was improving everything. And Eddie Murphy was like <laughs> waiting to see what he was going to do. And when he did it, he's just like, <laughs> like he's just laughing. He does. He loves it. He thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Well, what is he? He's selling like super guns. Like he has, he's got that super gun in the third one. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a dealer in the third one, right? Well, no, he's still working. He's working for the, the girl or he's, what is he doing? I forget what he's doing. Yeah, it's something different like that. Does he work at like a makeup counter in the first one or something? He he's working for his friend who's an art dealer. Yeah, and he's like the receptionist or whatever. And in the second one, he's got that awesome line where he's like, or it's just funny. Axel Foley shows up and Serge is like, asks him if he wants uh, an espresso. He's like, do you want espresso? And it's like, but his accent is so thick. And he's like, do you want the sugar in it? I think he says. And I couldn't really make out what he was saying, but. But Eddie Murphy's like just cracking up, like pointing at him, like this guy, this motherfucker is hilarious. And, it, and that was before Perfect Strangers, because he oh, got. Perf- is it? He Perfect Strangers season one is eighty six, and Beverly Hills Cop is eighty four, and and then in number two is eighty six. So he got Perfect Strangers off the back of this. When is a uh, True Romance? That's True Romance is like ninety one or ninety two. Okay. Is he in that? Yeah, he's really good in it. Bronson Pinchot is? Yeah. Oh, man. Who, he's, it, like have you ever seen part? it? Yeah, but it's been decades. Uh, not as small. I mean, there's so many people in that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's probably probably in the top 10 actors, but there's like a shitload of people in that. So I wonder but, if that's what he did. Because Perfect Strangers, I think it went to 93. It's like eight he's, seasons. He's good. He's really good. Um, John Landis directed uh, Beverly Hills. Gunther. Yeah, and it's really shit. John Landis. You know what I love? <laughs> There's a line. I think it's in three. I'm almost positive. Where he goes, where Axel goes. He says to <laughs> Serge, he goes, get the fuck out of here. And he goes, no, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. He goes, no, I cannot <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> or whatever he says. It's hysterical. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> he's like he's like doing half belky half oh man he's a gem he's a gem that no one no one like talks about where's he been i mean he pops up in things right uh he does no it's, man <laughs> the thing that he does you know it's that what's that thing where celebrities wish you a happy birthday cameo. but it's cameo 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 so he he he's like making his a living off of that which okay you know use whatever but like i got Christy Swanson wished me a happy birthday off that. Yeah. And, and she she said, uh, happy birthday. And I hope you and Mooj, uh, my my previous dog, she she's like, I hope you and Mooj are having a good day. But she mispronounced Mooj's name. And I was like, you, you. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, was all, still, that's kind of on. It was still I hilarious. You, it was I, still bought, hilarious. I bought one for somebody. That's for kind who? of uh, a buddy of mine. Um, but that you get to make a video to them. Oh, really? uh, yeah, you don't write out. Um, I mean, maybe it's different per celebrity, but the celebrity I did, you got you made a 30 second video for them and then they make the video. So that might be on whoever. That's like the script. Yeah. Will you say, hey, OK, it's for my buddy. Just th- this is what I want you to say. I, I it was for my buddy who it was for his birthday and I'm who, always trying to celebrity, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, it was a YouTube celebrity. His uh, it's one of not even a YouTube. He's like an Instagram one. Uh, he's hilarious. Uh, his name's Tyrone. His name, yeah. it, like his Instagram is just I'm Tyrone, <laughs> and he's this really jacked, scary dude that goes around slapping cigarettes out of people's hands and yelling at them to quit smoking. Jesus and it's fucking Christ. hilarious. And like gets up in their face, and, quit smoking, motherfucker! It's dangerous. <laughs> like, just, like fuck, man. And like the half he- of the time, people are like. Whoa, <laughs> like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Does he get arrested? Because that's like totally assault and battery. <laughs> no, because he's scared. Like, dude, if they get that to me, I'd be like, okay, man, I will quit smoking. Just <laughs> leave me the hell alone. It's uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, oh, it's great. He tells me he's going to fuck their wives. It's hilarious. So I'm going to fuck your wife. <laughs> quit smoking. He's hysterical. Jesus he's crazy. He is man. hysterical. And me and my buddy spent hours laughing at this guy online. 
That's uh, fun. That's fun. But yeah, so I told I made a video. I said, hey, man, yeah, uh, can you tell my buddy to quit smoking? He's got, you know, he's got big teeth. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you could say, you know, tell me you're going to fuck his wife or whatever. And then he did that. It was great. <laughs> ah, <Jesus. laughs> Christ. His video is awesome. That's great. I like that. Look up uh, I'm Tyrone. It's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also watched, so I'm into my rewatch of Stranger Things in anticipation of next weekend. When's the first? Today's the 29th. Man, is that Friday? Yeah. Holy shit. So Friday, the part two of season four comes out. Holy shit. Yeah. It's, a, it's the first, whenever that is. Um, and so I just, I'm like halfway through season three and man, Billy, he's on a rampage, man. He's on a rampage. <laughs> I, I, for, like as much as I love that character, I forgot how pivotal he was like season two. He's the, the human villain in season three. He is possessed by the mind flare or whatever. And like, man, he's got that awesome scene where he, I forget the dude's name, the actor, he has a weird name and he's so underrated, but where he goes to Mike's house and flirts with the mom, with Mike's mom. Yeah. Cause he's looking for his sister and she invites him in. She just got out of the bathtub and she's got her house coat on and he's like totally flirting with her. I mean, the guy has acting chops and yeah. it's such a great scene. And then knowing like where he goes, uh, it's just, it's such a great show, dude. And like, I, I watched the trailer for part two today of uh, season four, man, I'm so excited. It looks bonkers. I've never looked forward to Stranger Things ever. Like I've always loved it, but I've never looked forward to it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. But this is this is really amped, amped up. So yeah, I watched that. One one of the other things I haven't watched yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it just dropped apparently. And I'm very excited. Uh, the trailer for Hocus Pocus 2. Uh because <laughs> okay, I don't care about it. Okay. But it's my wife's favorite movie all the time. My wife is obsessed with Ben Midler. Like literally, I have a photo of Bette Midler in my bedroom. It's an <laughs> old movie. What is that? Like 90s. 93. And they're just now, is this like the same? Yeah, it, it bombed. They released it in like July of 93. Okay. And it and it bombed. And then it, but people f- found it on home video. I mean, yeah, I saw it a million, I saw a million movie. times as a kid. Uh, okay. Because, you know, I had sisters and, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Doug Jones is in it. Doug but, Jones, does he play a, a monster? Yeah, he plays a zombie. And I, you know, Bette Midler was huge in my house growing up. My mom loved Bette Midler and, you know. You are name. the wind beneath yeah. my wings. Heard that quite a bit. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's my wife's favorite movie. And I'm, I'm, I'm very excited just because it's like. You're excited you for her? But no, because I'm, I'm excited for her. But I'm also like, I spend a lot of time bitching about like, why like this thing used to be good and they don't get it and it sucks now <laughs> and i'm just i can't i can't wait i can't you think wait. that's gonna be the case yeah <laughs> is it, is it i don't the same think cast yeah they brought back all three girls which is who uh, bet midler bet midler uh kathy and jimmy and uh uh sarah jessica parker who is the second one you said kathy the jimmy i think is how you say it she's the bigger lady from like sister act Oh, yeah, and, yeah. I can see her face. I can see her face. But she's lost a lot of the weight. Dude, they've all got to be 100 years old. Well, Bette Midler, especially. I mean, Bette Midler, you know. Yeah. You they're know, not spring but, chickens, Kevin. I mean, they're witches. They're playing witches. It's not yeah. like, you know. Sarah Jessica Parker, man, her horse face is probably on point now, right? <laughs> I mean, she was, she, was, she was pretty hot in that first one, man. Was she? I would say that's the hottest she's ever been. Yeah, I I would ever thought she was. I feel like we were forced to think Sarah Jessica Parker was hot. Yeah, I I mean, like Sex in the City, and I don't know. I don't know. I I, thought her face was just weird. Yeah, I'm never. It it's weird. I I I watched every episode of Sex in the City. Me too. It's great. I never. We should do a Sex in the City podcast. Uh, Sure. I never liked Carrie. (laughs) She was always just like, ah, fucking fuck off with this. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the best written. Uh, whatever you call it, it's comedy. It's not as it's not a sitcom per se. No, uh, it's, uh, you know, but it's it's great writing. Yeah, it was solid. But she was the most boring yeah. of all the girls for sure. Yeah, and, and and her men just bugged me. 
her men. <laughs> well, like Aiden was a ju- Aiden. I'm not. Let's not even get on Aiden. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sex in the City. Watch it. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm, does that should I watch Hocus Pocus the first one? Have you ever seen it? I've never seen it. It's. I mean, it's fun. It's. It's. It's not. It's. It's darker than a than you would expect out of a Disney movie. Maybe I yeah you might enjoy it. I Maybe mean, I'll there's watch nothing wrong it with and, it. Uh, we'll do a what you watch next next week with it. It's it's a fun Halloween movie. It's a it's a yeah. fun family Halloween movie. All right, I like it. And those. it's full. Of, it takes place in Salem, and it's got a lot of like pumpkins and fucking fuck tr- yeah, dude. Trick or treating. It's one of those movies that takes place on Halloween. All and, right, hell you know, yeah, hell yeah. It, See, I always called it bogus, bogus because it looked bogus, <laughs> and I didn't want to watch it. Maybe it's, it's maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but I'm excited for. So you oh, want man. your wife to ex- experience. Your I don't want her to action with sequels that you've had. I don't want her to, but I will say that it, all the sequels. No, it's it's just that, like, I mean, ninety five percent of the time when they bring something back from, you know what I mean? It yeah, it sucks. It sucks. It's it's always it's almost always bad. But this is the original cast, man. <laughs> oh no shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll get lucky and they'll be, be in it for great. more than two minutes at the end of the movie. You think they're going to be replaced by young witches? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're barely in it, and there's That's like hilarious. three new witches. I watch. We keep and they keep and we're they, we keep talking. Yeah, uh, we just jam down our throat. You hate it's going to be woke. You, you hate new things so much. <laughs> it's that new thing. It's just like <laughs> it's stop, women. It's women. Stop. Stop using my. <laughs> My old thing is like bait. Yeah, I get like stop that. putting the Ghostbusters logo on shit to make me go see it. Like I, I get that. Yeah, I mean it's just, and I shouldn't even say Ghostbusters. That they're not even the most egregious. It's just another thing. Yeah, nothing. You know, nothing's fun. Not every, everything. Yeah, everything sucks now. Welcome to the <laughs> Everything Sucks podcast, everybody. <laughs> What'd you watch? I think that's it. I think that's everything. I, there's something else I watched. I can't remember. Um, we should probably. You want to talk about this movie? Talk about yeah. suck. Talk sucking. Jesus Christ! No, I'm kidding. All right, 1974, Young Frankenstein, directed by Mel Brooks, written by Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder, starring Gene Wilder, Terry Garr, Madeline Kahn, Cloris Leachman, Marty Feldman, Peter Boyle. Dude, can we just give it up for Marty Feldman so much? Yeah, man, he's awesome. Holy he's shit! Great. I did a Google image search of Marty Feldman today. It's, <laughs> it's nuts. Nuts. Like the guy was just one of a kind visually his just who he was and his, his timing I and mean, he, he did it all he wrote he directed and he wasn't born that way no what's but, his condi- what's the thing what's going on um he it's it's a it's a gland or what do you call it there's something going on but it didn't happen it was he got into a car accident i think in his 30s okay and it fucked with one like something whatever happened in the okay. car crash what's what's whatever it's not an ulcer it's it's a medical term yeah, yeah. But it was going on behind his eyes and okay. it made it made his eyes like that so he doesn't have a, one like one glass eye either that's not the I, case. I don't think so no because that's what it looks like along with a massive stigma for folks who don't you know know marty feldman i don't blame people a lot of people don't know who he is but he's a gem he has an eye condition and you look at him and it's just like it looks like i mean his eyes are just bulging out of his head in different directions but he's like one of a kind but yeah i was doing a good he search rolled was, with it. that's what was cool is like it wasn't yeah what are you gonna do what are I you mean, gonna do frankly like you know what i mean if they did that now if they cast this movie now and they cast him you know what i mean it would be like you could that, you, you couldn't be, do it it would be like chris pine or somebody well yeah chris exactly they probably even, put chris hemsworth in it <laughs> the, the idea that like yeah man he's gonna play igor in a movie like fuck yeah man and yeah. he does it so well. Like, it's just, so imagine, do, you, do you think they auditioned for this? And then, cause he worked with Mel Brooks in other movies, but I don't know. I think this is the first one that they worked. Really? Together. I wonder what he, I don't know what he did before this being 74, but I, I wouldn't put it past Mel Brooks where for Mel Brooks to just be like, I wrote this role for Marty Feldman because yeah. it's cause he's, he's Igor, which by movie. the way, that I never got until this viewing. That he might be fucking with him, uh, we like, on the on the Igor part or what? Yeah, like that. Like he because he's like, "Do you say Froderick?" When he says, "It's one of my favorite Froderick, lines." It's all the. Do you friends. also say Froderick? I love the conversation. The like, <laughs> you say Frankenstein, but it's Frankenstein. <laughs> no, I say Frankenstein. Do you say Froderick? Or do you say Frankenstein? <laughs> no, I say Frederick. And then he's like, 
okay, so your name's uh, what's your name? It says uh, Igor. No, no, Igor. Igor. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I never got that. I thought I was when I was younger. I, yeah. Or the last time I saw it, I I picked it up as like that. That's funny that like he has the same thing going on with his name, but I like that. I, this time I read it as, oh no, he's fucking, he's fucking with them. Like, you know what? I'm doing it too then. Fuck you. <laughs> no, totally. I could see it that way. Cause, cause Franken or Gene Wilder is intentionally changing his name because he doesn't yeah. want it to be associated. And the joke on that is, dude, it's obviously Frankenstein, not yeah. Frankenstein. So I wouldn't put it. Yeah. That, that would make sense. I love that scene, man. I love it. And my grandfather works for your Frodo. grandfather. Rates have gone up though. Um, <laughs> I don't know the whole cast I could go into. I think they're all great, but I think that at the bottom of my list is Peter Boyle. He was great. Oh my God. He's, he's almost at the top of mine. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Cause I, cause the Madeline Kahn is bananas in this, in this <laughs> like her, this, the, the goodbye scene at the train. Yeah. Where she won't let him touch him. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, they end up doing just elbows and she does that throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And it made me think back. I was like, well, what else have I seen her in? But then I was like, oh, Blazing Saddles, where she plays a similar sort of role. And then also Clue, man. Yeah, she's great in Clue. <sighs> she's great. Do you like Clue? I love Clue. Man, I, I love, love that movie. I love, love Clue. I watched that with my family two years ago, and they couldn't stand it, even though we'd all seen it. And I was That's like, wild. Yeah, it's so good. They're like, oh, it's too annoying. I'm like, what? What, you what was your... That's crazy. Yeah. What... What was your first exposure to it? Like, did you see it in theaters? Did I you saw see it, it as a kid on Comedy v- Central, I assume. VHS, I want to say, or something they, like that. They played it nonstop on Comedy Central okay. uh, before they had, like, shows. Like, it was just like, okay. And it was one of the ones they played all the time. But It's like, a great movie. Yeah, it's awesome. Tim I, it's Curry, crazy. Tim Curry at the top of his game. Yeah. It's crazy that they did the um the endings like the way they did. Yeah, the, the they shipped endings. out four different or three different endings to different theaters. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, different. It depending on so like you'd come out of the movie and like if someone else saw it, like do you see Clue, you would be talking about it, like that's how it ended. It was this guy. <laughs> no shit. Are you? Yeah, serious? Ship, yeah. And when on the DVD, you can choose you can choose what ending to watch it with. Or you could randomize it, or you can watch it with all three, or because because the only way I've ever seen it is where they go, where it's got all the multiple endings, but they edit it accordingly, where it's like, yeah, well, or maybe the, or, or maybe, maybe it happened this. like this, yeah, and then it says, but this is how it really happened, and then it's Dude, the big FBI that's ending. Genius! I didn't yeah. realize they sent different different prints to different theaters. No oh, shit. Yeah, it, that's nuts. That's awesome, man. If you guys haven't seen Clue, check it out. I even have after we watched it. That was at the beginning of the pandemic and I grabbed, we still had our 1986 clue board game from when we were kids sitting, mm-hmm. sitting in the closet for the last 20 years. I grabbed it and I've got it sitting right over here. Fucking love that. One of these Is days it the I'm one from have, the movie? Uh, it's 86. I don't know it. If but it, I mean, what is the, is the clue board game, the tie into the, cause you know, they have no, different, it doesn't have had, any, anything. They had like a, I'm, I'm pretty sure when the movie came out, they did a, like a, box with that like with the actors it. on it i'll have to look at the box i don't think it is but maybe it is. one of these days i'm gonna have four friends and and we're gonna sit down and play clue i've only played clue once it was at my grandmother's house and i remember being like this is how do you play it yeah. like when you actually a- <laughs> when you actually like read the rules and like figure yeah. it, like, you, you never feel like you're playing it right yeah like because because that's the other thing if you read the thing and you're wrong the game's fucking over <laughs> like, it's it's, it's totally not a weird. perfect game no. That you know, you know what's wild about that? If you think about the difference between that and like battle shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the same. Like, hey, we're gonna make a movie about like with the IP of whatever, yeah. and with Clue, it's like it's great because they clearly like wanted to make that movie. Yeah, the other one is like, what do we got? Battleship? Fuck it, let's make a movie and name <laughs> yeah. it Battleship. Like, it also came out. Battleship also came out at a point where there was no creativity in Hollywood. Um, Clue. In the eight, in the middle of the eighties, that was like eighty five, yeah, eighty six, where it was like I, yeah. everything was great that came out. So yeah, the you know like Madeline Kahn, Cloris Leachman, she doesn't, she's awesome, man. I saw Cloris, Cloris Leachman. Leachman. It was a, I saw a roast for man, I can't remember who was being roasted, but it was a bunch of like Gilbert Godfrey was in was they had like the people who were roasting whoever this was, 
Yeah, I, I know the one. The I think, it, I think it might here. be Bob Saget. It was. It was Bob Saget. You're right. It was Bob Saget's roast. And Cloris Leachman got up there. She was the only woman in this group of like just testosterone dudes, you know, telling their jokes. And she gets up there and just kicks all their asses. It was so good. She's great, man. And she never made any bones about like, did you ever see her in Beer Fest? No. Oh, she's like 90 years old. <laughs> and she like, she's talking. To, it's fucking so stupid. She's talking about how she came from like the old country. Yeah. She's like, I was a whore in the, <laughs> in the old country. And like, it's fucking hilarious. She it's, owns she just owns it man. and she talks about like sucking hot it's so yeah like she doesn't she there's no like like hey i'm not she's not betty whiting it up where she's like i'm not saying that like she's, she's not bashful like, no you know, like, about anything especially in, in like her old like that saga thing was what like maybe five years ago at most uh probably like 10 10 okay still she's 700 years old or whatever <laughs> um and you know so she plays frau brew brew her brew whatever uh, you know what the horse thing, right? No. So every time they say her name, a horse screams. You know, in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's because okay. it's because br- brew her bruja, whatever the fuck the word is, yeah. means means glue in in uh, ger- in German. <laughs> I that's didn't the, know that. That's the joke. So every time she's like, they're like Frau Bruher. It's like yeah. There's a you lot know? of cool trivia about this one um, too. That like I wish I knew more. How do you was... feel about how do you feel about Terry Gar in this movie? She's good. Yeah. You know. I mean. You know, just absolutely. I fell in love with her in this. Yeah, I like her better than um, the Madeline Khan. Really? Oh, she's yeah. got a bet. She's got a she's got, she's got a meteor role. And yeah, she's yeah, got, yeah. you know, I mean, they're both they both basically have one gag. That they get to do the whole movie. But yeah. gags. I mean, the whole movie's gags. Yeah. But I mean, like one bit. Yeah. You, you know, know what I, I mean? Totally, like totally. She gets to be horny the whole movie. And like, you know, Madeline <laughs> Khan gets to be celibate. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. I'll bet yeah. that was Gene Wilder. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Kid, when they were writing it, like I'll bet that was mostly him. That cho- what do you mean? That chose like that chose, but like okay, she's just gonna be horny all the time, and yeah. she's gonna be celibate. He's not gonna be interested. I wouldn't in doubt like, it, you know? man, because Gene Wilder, the more I mean, he's my favorite actor of all time, and he every th- every time I see him in a movie, I pick up on more of probably who he was, and then I watch interviews, and I'm like, you were, and he was just like a very very sexual dude in real life. Which yeah. is so weird because you look at him and he's got like this Jerry curl hair that's like all messed and weird afro. He looks like somebody's uncool. He doesn't yeah, look like a leading buddy, man, like buddy, a sexy leading man guy, you know. But he like oozes charisma, man. Yeah, that's, you know what I oh, mean. Like one hundred percent, as evidence, the, you know, Silver Streak. I mean, he's just like yeah that we did last week. I mean, it, it, Willy Wonka. He's just like he's he's yeah. mysterious. He's like I mean, dude, he's something else. I I wish I, I wish I could have seen and I he was probably dead by then but uh not Gene Wilder but his interview with Conan where Conan asked him about Richard Pryor and he's talking right. to him like we right. didn't really hang out but but we we got each other's chemistry right away and we just yeah. worked off each other really well and then he's like it was almost like a sexual energy you know what yeah. I'm saying and like yeah. I wish I wish I could see Richard Pryor like I wish Richard Pryor was sitting there that. with him because Richard Pryor was like old school. He'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wonder. I would love. I wonder, man, because that's why maybe I not. Up, maybe maybe he'd agree with him. That's why I brought up that scene last week in Silver Street where they have their first goodbye, and it's like super sincere, you know. And it's mostly because of the way Richard Pryor looks at Gene Gene Wilder. Like, yeah, man. We are I, what you know what's a funny genuine a love, a genuine love and good friendship there. I, don't know. I wonder if there's a if there's a lot of interviews because there's a bunch of interviews with him talking about Richard Pryor. There might so there's a documentary about Richard Pryor that came out for like 10 years ago. It was right before he died. I want to say they talk about they they have to you have to talk about Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, you would think. I don't know. I, think. I I should rewatch that documentary. I mentioned it last week, man. Watch, I mean, read when you get a chance, you know, when when you retire or whatever. Read uh, Gene Wilder's autobiography. I almost ordered it. Kiss uh, actually, it's been recommended to me a Dude, bunch. It's a it's fast. Big. It's a quick read. It's so good. Uh, it's it's absolutely worth reading. He's he was just a special dude. He's also got a really literally months before he died. I think Al, he spent a day with Alec Baldwin and they videotaped it. And it's like a interview slash hangout. I don't know why yeah. Alec, Alec Baldwin. This was so. This was like whenever ten years ago or something. Really good. It was the first time he had done an interview in like 
a decade or two and just really good stuff. Gene Wilder, man. I was looking at his stuff today and there's still movies I haven't seen of his and he didn't do that many, but uh, Sherlock Holmes, Smarter Brother. I haven't seen that. I need to watch that this week. And then he was also in a sitcom. Did you know this? In like the early or like late 90s, he was in a sitcom that was riding off the coattails of Friends. So it was that kind of vibe. And it's nowhere. You cannot, find, I forget what it's called, but you can't find it anywhere. Like streaming. Was it on like a? Yeah, it was like a, a network. network. It was a network show. It just did. It made it one season and it was done. You know, and he's one. I was thinking about him today. I I, I want to say like if he were around now, like if he were still alive, and even like still active, like if he was still working, I mean, he might, he'd probably get canceled pretty quick. I mean, he did he did. Bl- yeah, he. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> you know, know about just, canceled, but like. I mean, one, you know, he did blackface in the last movie. <laughs> he makes a. Uh, like this book that he put out when i was reading the reviews there's a lot of people and like this guy's a fucking sexual deviant this guy's a pe-. like there, really? there's either five star reviews where people are like this book's awesome and this guy's a national treasure yeah. but then there's a few that like this guy's a fucking sexual predator piece of shit interesting like, i don't yeah. think that i don't think that's the case but I, like i said he was he does come off as just very sexual in nature which I don't know. People can't handle it. Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. mean, as long as you're not Bill Cosby. Yeah. Not, man. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely stages of bad. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. are definitely stages. Of Everything bad up until Bill, Bill Cosby is totally <laughs> fine. Is what Adam's saying. As long as you're not. Dude, what was I? I watched something this week. Oh, the boys. Oh my God. Are you, have you watched that yet? I Season watched the third? first two seasons. I haven't seen third season now. Dude, there's a, so one of the characters is a Captain America character, like analog. Mm-hmm where he's been frozen in time for X amount of years and they unfreeze him. And he's talking about like, well, wait, this changed and that changed. And this person isn't whatever, blah, blah, blah. And the, and Bill Cosby comes up and he's like, why aren't more people like Bill Cosby, America's dad. And you know, he's been frozen for the whole rape. thing. (laughs) It's such a, the boys is premium, man. It's such a good show. I, I, Bill Cosby used to be not my hero. He wasn't ever, but he was always in my top, probably top 10 comedians. I mean, hell yeah. Well, I never, yeah. His stand up is, dude. his stand up is, is what is awesome. I Dad mean, that is great. Give us the chocolate cake. <laughs> dude, I mean, I'll never you know, forget that. Dude. And, and, they, and the Cosby show, man. I grew Cosby up on the Cosby show, show. And I, and you know what, folks, <clears throat> go, go back and watch the Cosby show because if you want to know how to raise your kids right, you watch the Cosby show, you watch Roseanne. Unfortunately, both of those leads in the shows in real life are complete shit bags, but that doesn't take away. I still from, like Roseanne. It doesn't take away <laughs> from the shows, but the Cosby show was, is great, man. It is so good. Jerry Seinfeld dated a 17 year old, by the way, when Jerry, the show all right, canceled, he's done. He's out when the show was on the air. He was really? bringing her to, yeah. The show was on the air. He's bringing her to premiere 17. She's the biggest boobs in the world. Oh, that's look it up. That's great. <laughs> Saying, let's Jerry run it. Seinfeld. Yeah, you know, some people are people, <laughs> some people get a, some people get a pass, some people don't. Mel Brooks, you were talking about. I think this is Mel Brooks. I think it's his best directed movie. He might have better movies, but I don't think so. You um, you said this wasn't your. I know you love this movie. It wasn't because I saw it. I saw it later. I've always thought History of the World is better than this. Okay. I'll tell you the hump the hump joke, which is funny. About oh, like yeah. the location of the hump. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about when it switches sides. Yeah. It switches sides. He goes, wasn't your hump on the other side? And he goes, I have a hump. Or he goes, well, what hump? He does that twice. He does it. Uh, when they first meet, he goes, you know, I'm a great surgeon and I could help you with that hump. And he's like, what hump? Yeah. And then later on, it switches sides <laughs> and he goes, like, is, is it the same thing where he goes, what, what are you? Goes, I think so. Yeah. The- I think so. Yeah. I, I think, I think the execution of that, and this is probably an unpopular opinion. I think the execution of that joke is better in in Men in Tights. What, what it's so Richard Lewis plays the king. Okay. Yeah. And in every scene, his mole is in a different spot on his oh, face. Right. And it's like here and here and here. <laughs> and then uh, there's one where it's well, okay. And then before the last time you see him, it's in the center of his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> but before it's in the center of his forehead, when they point out that it's been moving. And it, it's a giant mole. It's like this fucking big. It's huge. And it's, it's the funny, like the sheriff in Nottingham goes like, wasn't your mole on the other side? 
and he, it, it, like just Richard Richard loses the delivery. He goes, I have a mole. And it's, so, <laughs> it's the best. I, it's the same joke, but I think it's better. It's the it's, that's it's awesome. Oh, so good. It's I mean, I, I'm not as familiar with men in tights. I mean, I think I, I think it's I think it's, I think it's better than people give it. it people it, consider it one of his lesser movies for totally, sure. Totally. It came around at a time when like there was a lot of that kind of stuff spoof going on. Yeah. Uh, Mel Brooks invented pretty much. Yeah. Spoof with Blazing Saddles, I think. Where's it? When is history of the world? Blazing Saddles was like Blazing Saddles, 69 you know, this, or something. This, you know, this is Blazing Saddles, I think, came out the same year. I think Blazing uh, Saddles was first. I'm almost positive. Uh, hang on one second. But it was, I think, I think um, 74, 73. I thought it was in the 60s, but I could be wrong. Hang on one second. I, it, no, it's 70. It's the 70s uh, for sure. I think they're both 74. NBA sucks. Sorry. 74, you're right. But when was Blazing Saddles? 74. And this was That's also weird. 74. Yeah, it's weird that they came out in the same year. I didn't know that. That's I think that might be why he was so like I use I mean he was on a run too. Like Dude, what what are you using to look up movies? <laughs> that, um that sucks. So IMDb. Bad. No, it's, dude, just uh, Google it. You just Google it and it says everything automatically. Right, but I'm trying to find like what came out when and you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, February Google tells you it says release date February 7th, 74. Uh young Frankenstein was December 15th, 74. So he had two probably his, the two his two best movies yeah arguably yeah like arguably it's, well you like but it definitely his two most well-known and like right. respected movies in for the sure same year that's crazy that's awesome and gene wilder looks so different almost a decade younger in blazing saddles it's crazy yeah it's crazy i, I think it's the mustache i mean mustaches add so much it depends it's so funny that yeah, uh, yeah. like weird al looks like a, like some people they grow a mustache and they don't look any different really weird Al looks like a completely different person totally you speaking like, of have you seen that weird Al trailer uh with Daniel Radcliffe yeah yeah I'm all over it I don't know what this movie is going to be though I don't either and I don't usually watch um what do they call them biopics or whatever I hate yeah, that shit but- it's like I'll just watch the real thing or I live through the real thing but this one the fact that they're doing one about weird Al with like an A-list kind of A-list actor and yeah, I'm all over it. Uh, yeah, I'm dying to see Weird Al. I was gonna, I want to go see him. He's, I, I had tickets to see him, and the fucking pandemic happened, and I didn't get to go. And then fucking uh, fuck you, pandemic. And then the new, the new, uh, it that he re- just started the tour back up, this okay. that same tour, and uh, no one wants to go see Weird Al with me. My wife used to be like, yeah, I'll go, and now we have two kids, so it's like, ah, uh, dude, stay at home. fuck your kids. <laughs> wait you, you didn't pre-pandemic like right as the pandemic started you didn't have any kids i had the one that was brand new uh, and it was like why can't you get uh, grandma and grandpa to watch him go see oh, we can now. it's okay. just like that it's like it's different it's like you know yeah you, you, it's not that you, you want to use that all the time but like yeah yeah if I, yeah my wife is gonna be like I, if, if i'm gonna take the you know i mean if we're gonna get a babysitter and we're gonna go downtown and Let's do something besides Weird Al. I mean, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna get her, get her some lobster, and she'll be fine. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be going to a lot of bigger chili. Should be good. I mean, she's not opposed <laughs> to Weird Al, but it's like she, he's not. You know, <laughs> what kind of you know? You just said chilies, right? I just want to make sure you just said yeah. that. Yeah, she loves chilies. I know we talked about her. <laughs> just we went like, to chilies uh, tonight. No shit, really? What'd yeah. you have? What'd you have? I, I had uh, the bacon burger and and what'd six you? wings. What'd she have? Uh, she had uh, the old timer. Nobody got fajitas, man. That's why you go to show. No, them. she also got a margarita. Do you know when I was a kid, I would have, I probably, if you'd put like a knife in my hand, I would have probably shivved someone for the Chili's fajitas. That's how much I loved those things. I've never and had I, them. And I'm dying to know if they changed the recipe. I Maybe. I, were, you know, she would know better so than good. me. How are those wings? The wings are awesome. It's, are I they? usually, I wouldn't usually get both the wings and the burger, but the the wings are so good that it's like, only and they six, weren't only as six? good as they usually are. They come in like, well, they, they throw like a handful. It's supposed to be, they have like a small, medium, a large, you know, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Weird Al. <laughs> uh, you ever see Weird just, Al's TV show? It's like this weird Pee Wee's Playhouse. But yeah. Not. Yeah. I went through a, I mean, I've always liked Weird Al and like, I went through Weird Al phases where I was like, I'm going to watch everything he's ever done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We had, it was, I think it was Weird Al TV. Or no, Weird Al TV was like when he had he had like a block on MTV. 
yeah, man, I love UHF. I, I love. I mean, I love. I celebrate the guest catalog. Guess fucking awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's great, and it's funny how he's made it this far doing parody without getting in trouble or like anything. Like, well, like, he has to. They they all sign off on sure, songs. Sure. My favorite story. He said he has a story about Coolio. Like someone, oh, yeah. I forget what it was. Yeah, somebody asked him, like, has anybody ever gotten mad at you for the song? I've seen celebrities be like, I don't like my song. Like uh, yeah. Nirvana was like, like the cut. Co- you mean the cover? No, ver- his cover it, version. It was. I don't know if it was a Nirvana or I think it was Flea from the Rad Chili Peppers. Like, oh, and theirs is awesome. Which theirs, one? Which one did he do of theirs? They do. Uh, they he did a parody of uh, "Give It Away Now," but oh. it's Yabba Dabba Do. It's it's the Flintstones. <laughs> It's really good. And it's a music video. Oh my God. Anyway, it's a, yeah, yabba dabba, yabba dabba. It's great. Flea, <laughs> Flea's lost street cred, in my, in my opinion, after Kenobi. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, anyway, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I Weird Al. No, that's cool. Weird Al is great. He's a joke. I was going to tell that Coolio story. That's just my favorite. It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not even a story. It's like, it, like somebody asked him, is it, have you ever gotten, he goes, no, well, I, you know, before I do it, I have them sign a release and we get permission to do it. Otherwise, we can't do it. And I guess Coolio went on record and be like, I never gave him permission to, to do Gangster Paradise. Yeah. And like that he asked him about it and he was like, I mean, yes, you did. <laughs> I don't know what else <laughs> I can tell you. Like, I would, what do you mean? Like you could have uh, sued me into, into oblivion if you yeah, could. Totally. What do you mean that you just didn't? I don't have like he just does he's like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> yes, you definitely signed it. Like I it's the funny. That's so good, man. That's so good. Yeah, it's like shut up, you idiot. And it only does you a favor when he does that. When he I does your song, more, ah, fuck. I, I hate to go on another tip, but like it, this isn't even. I have one more tiny weird L story. Yeah, go okay. for it. Jeez. Do you know about when he was on Celebrity uh, Wheel of Fortune? No, it's the best. Okay, but he so did he t- do a song about Jeopardy, didn't he? I he lost did. on Jeopardy. Yeah. That's a uh, that's an original. Which uh, and people it, don't talk about his originals, but his originals yeah. are great. No, that's his best, man. I think. Uh, but he so he's on Wheel of Fortune. He's on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. It was I forget who the red person was. You can pull this episode up on uh, YouTube. He was the blue, and in the middle, the yellow was both uh, Little Richard and James Brown. Like so, the, like they were on a team. The real people. Yeah, yeah. It was Celebrity okay. Wheel of Fortune. Okay, okay. God, that's insane. insane. But the that story insane. the story he tells, I think it was on Conan. It might have been on Letterman, but he tells the story on Conan about when he played Wheel of Fortune with James Brown. He goes, so they have us all in like an hour before we're going to record. And he's like, James Brown showed up with about 30 people. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. like, you know, yelling and this is this, like, whatever. He's like, then we come to, like, he goes up and they make us practice it like did say okay well like we're gonna do a practice round just to make sure you know whatever and james brown doesn't know how to play at all <laughs> <laughs> he's never seen wheel of fortune so which i think and it, weird i didn't say this but it's he doesn't actually doesn't even bring up the fact that he got a teammate but little yeah. richard's up there with him for yeah. seemingly just to keep him in line because he's all james browned out yeah yeah he's like and he's like i swear to god this happened he's like he he, he spins the wheel and he goes, okay, uh, give me an I. And Pat says, uh, it's got it, it's got to be a consonant, you know. So he goes, okay, Africa. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't get that clip, but you can get Weird Al telling that story. And I trust Weird Al. I don't think Jay, I don't think Weird Al's making that up. <laughs> Dude, that's got to be somewhere. That clip has to be somewhere. Holy well, shit. Yeah. Look at up, look up Weird Al telling the story because that's he's told that on a bunch of different shows. But he's not going to be yeah. telling that story all week. I'm going to tell that story all week. <laughs> it sounds like an uncle joke. It yeah. sounds like you ever hear what James Brown was on. <laughs> Wheel of Origin. It sounds like a, like a fake story. Where does but, where does Weird Al tell this story? I he did. I think it was on Conan. Okay, it yeah, might have been on Letterman. Holy it was on shit, a talk man. show. So if you good. just type in Weird Al uh, James Brown, it's the first yeah. thing that comes up. Yeah. God damn it, that is good. Woo! Welcome to Weird Al Hour. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Werewolf. 
<laughs> Bear wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a stupid joke, but it's so good. It's so good, man. They nail like, it. Like the delivery and it worked. <laughs> like, yes. Also because the conversation that follows is there's the howl. Terry Gar is like werewolf. And, and then Gene Wilder is like werewolf. And like in a question like tone. And then Feldman's like, there, there wolf. <laughs> and he's like, and he goes, their castle, their castle. <laughs> and then G Wilder comes up and is like, why are you, why are you, why talking, are you talking like, like that? that? And he's like, I thought you wanted to talk like that. He's like, G Wilder's like, no, I don't want to talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's so good, man. And that's, that's where Gene Wilder shines, man. I mean, in so many aspects, but where he's like that, like weird deadpan. No, you know, like, no, I didn't want, I don't know. Let's yeah. not do this. So let's not talk about that. No, he is a perfect straight man. Like oh, up man. until, you know, so good. Uh, but that, that's what I mean about, well, that not, not that joke, but there are, there's a lot of jokes like, like that are the Luke, I'm your father, the where it's just like, well, it's in the zeitgeist now. But so like yeah. it, it didn't land as well, but some of them, are that and they still get me like when he's looking at the heads and he gets oh, to Feldman in the, in so the thing but and like I don't know what it is maybe it's because in black and white maybe it's because of like just his face I don't know but like it works every time in this so good. I remember that was like I was the mo- one of the most offended with the new Ghostbusters because they because they do that joke oh that's right she's just looking at all these like wigs and then and it's like I, <laughs> You talking about the new one or the, the no the girl one yeah yeah, yeah right. the 2016 it was just like <laughs> I remember like really, do you want to tell like a knock knock like like what what is this like this is a 40 year old joke like and it's in the most popular comedy of all time like what is, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like, it's just uh, if it was in a better movie it would have worked though I think it is in a better movie 40 years ago <laughs> no but I'm saying like if they if if the homage to young Frankenstein in that using that joke joke was in a better movie. It would have worked. Cause it, cause you know, as, as much as we love young Frankenstein and that joke, very few people nowadays know young Frankenstein and even less know that joke. The people you know, on the set had to have known young Frankenstein, right? Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. But well, you hope, but I don't know who either way that, whatever that movie doesn't exist anymore. Kevin, <laughs> let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but yeah, that's, freshly dead like and then he's like their reaction to see like it's a bunch of skulls and then you see marty feldman's face and it's like yeah with his eyes and it's like what the fuck <laughs> yeah and he's like i ain't got nobody <laughs> it's so like <sighs> he's great he's great he's great man, man. he really is so One, yeah one that people one that people i guarantee i wonder i don't know but one that has always gotten me similar to the one you were talking about that you couldn't remember when they hear uh they they discover the bookcase that spins yeah and they're going through the camera is on the door handle it's like this door knocker handle thing and gene wilder reaches down and it just crumbles in his hand he's he like holds his hand up like what the fuck and then they end up pushing the door open but man, when he grabs that handle and it crumbles every time I lose my shit, I don't know why. And that had to have been written in there as a, as a, like a comedy beat. Cause yeah. otherwise, cause there's no other reason to show that. It's just every time I see that it's hilarious. Put the candle back, put the candle back with the spinning thing. Yeah. Another great one. I got to say like Peter Boyle nails it, man. His like putting on the Ritz is hilarious. Like, I mean, it's one thing like always oh, dancing. That's fun. But like, watch, on the ring. yeah, watching and being like, because, you know, Gene Wilder is the whole song. And then it goes to him. Like, is he going to say it? Like, because you don't know it's been like six months or whatever. And you're like, do you teach him to talk? Whatever. And he goes, <laughs> like, it's great. It's the, best. the way he says Ritz is like, it's like, it's almost I feel like that today. I don't know if they would do that today. I don't know why I feel like they might not. But the way he says it is so Put it on the red. It's like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like P- I, I, Peter Boyle, I think is really, really great in this. And he's, I remember the first time I saw this. Do, do you remember? Like, I, I remember I thought, like, did they switch brains at the end? Or like, that's what I thought they were doing, but they weren't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when he gets smart and 
I no. thought that's what they did. I think he did get a little, you know, with the ending. Yeah. He, he does the, the whole like, mm, yeah. Not, you know, I guess his wiener's all big. Yeah. But that's, I think he got a little bit of Frankenstein's juices in him when they did the switch thing. The also when that during the song and dance, I love Gene Wilder where I forget what happens. I think Frankenstein sees fire or something and stops and then it all goes bad. Yeah. But Gene Wilder tries to like keep it going. He's like, okay, no, no, don't stop. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's and so it's good. so like he's clearly made his point too to like the like the audience. Like, look, I did it. Like, but totally. How about uh how about Gene Wilder? I mean, I, I mean Gene uh, Hackman. Yeah, man. I always forget it. You know what this reminds it always reminds me of the scene of the um the scene in Caddyshack where uh, Chevy Chase and Bill Murray, he's looking for his ball and it's just, they're dicking around the whole time. I don't know. This scene just, it feels like kind of improv Like I, I wouldn't. Think, yeah. I think like, it is. And from what I understand, he, he was a pretty serious actor at the time and like yeah. wanted to try comedy. And they yeah. were like, yeah, fuck it, man. I wrote down in my notes. It's the weirdest cameo. First of all, it's like Gene Hackman, but I wrote down in my notes, like this is the most fun Gene Hackman's ever had in his life. Cause he's always been just super serious. He was in the Marines and he was like, no bullshit, like in real life. And then yeah, he even said something, uh, he retired because of health reasons, I think, but he said something right before he retired where he was like, something like these kids today are a bunch of fucking assholes and I don't want to work. It was something to that, that extent. Like, I don't want to be a part of this bullshit. Something you would say when like 10 years from now, <laughs> good company man <laughs> you know but like i'll take it he's so great in this man and he is for like his first comedy beats or if this if that's the case just his delivery on every single thing and it's such a short scene and it's so i mean I mean, his comedy beats were awesome like he he was a great comedic actor like i mean he like royal tenenbaums is just that yeah. whole movie it's all timing oh his timing, you know Matt. it's it's all reaction and timing and he's just a masterful at all of it you his, know what i mean his, i'll never forget his scene with uh with uh danny glover in the kitchen when they fight kind of mm -hmm. you know the yeah. two seniors like and he calls him i mean it's racist whatever but it's like he calls him culture <laughs> yeah <laughs> it wouldn't work with anybody else and his timing it's so good it's so good it, yeah, it's he, so well he uh, is dude, that the he's, only wes he, is that the only wes anderson he's done yeah okay i want to say yeah um, he might have been in another one for like a second, but yeah, he, uh, yeah. And then he like, like he gets stabbed by like his little like lackey. He <laughs> like, in what in ten bombs? In ten bombs, they they leave like right after like the family kicks him out. It's it's such like a weird thing. Family kicks him out of the house. He's or I'm sorry, he gets kicked out of the uh, hotel he's been living in. Right. The whole family hates him, and then he gets stabbed by this little Indian guy, and he goes, ah, god damn it, and he goes. And he just gets in his face. He goes, that's the last time you put a knife in me. And oh, then they're yeah. all like, fr and then they're friends. And then he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then he gets him in the car. And he drives <laughs> it's so away. Good. But it's, it's so, so like, like he's been like knifed. He's totally like that by. guy's been knifing him like 17 times. Like the, <laughs> throughout yeah. their life. Well, he stabbed him in the war. Yeah. Like, that's like, they, they put that last time you knife, <laughs> put a knife in me. <laughs> like, man, Gene Hackman's fucking great. Yeah. He's a man in Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide, dude. Crimson Tide. Is that the, um, that's the submarine submarine movie. one. Yeah. It with Denzel. That's one where I think he's having like a blast, but it's like, it's a serious fucking movie, but do I really dig his, like his Popeye Doyle stuff. And like, I mean, it's all a little dated, but what a great character. And like, I've never seen Hoosiers. That's one I probably should see maybe. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah he's that dude's awesome. I miss him. Kind of cool to like retire though. I mean, not a lot of, not a lot of actors do him. Jack Nicholson. Although didn't I see her that Jack Nicholson's coming back for something? I don't know. Uh, is he? I thought he was. Dude, another conversation that I love is back to the uh, Feldman. Oh, it's a different yeah. scene. But when Feldman gets the Abby normal brain, the abnormal brain. Yeah. And he comes back and they put it in. And Gene Wilder is like, can you come here for a minute? I just want to talk to you. you know? And he's all <laughs> calm. He's like, he's like, are you telling me that? Like, He's like, whose brain is that that I put in there? And he's like, I don't know. It said Abby, 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 someone, Abby normal. He's like, he's like, you promise you're not going to get mad at me. And Gene Wilder's like, I will not be angry. Like the way that he delivers that line. 
with his face. It's just, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, and then he's like, you tell me I put an abnormal brain and so good. The delivery in that. It's just a bunch of like great scenes. Yeah. It's once strung great. together. One of the cool thing, one of the cool little uh, trivia bits about this one. Do you know about the, the prop guy? No. So they they started making the movie and uh, Mel Brooks found out that uh, Ken Strickfaden, who did all the props and background shit for the Universal Frankenstein movies back in the uh, day, he was like, yeah, he, they found out that guy was still alive. And that guy never got any credit for those movies. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, Man. apparently. And so he like tracked him down, went to his house and said, yeah, he had all the he had all the shit at his house. Like he, <laughs> he had all of it in his garage and he was like, like a whole Frankenstein setup. Yeah, like he had all this, all the props. And he was like, just let me bu-, like he rented them from him and then put his name in in, in young Frankenstein in the credits. Awesome. Yeah. And man, I wrote yeah. that down in my notes that this movie just looks phenomenal. The choice to shoot it in black and white. I thought I read somewhere that had to that it had to do with with the props and the sets that they looked so much better in black and white. I think that was part of the choice. Is there a color version of this? Because like, I don't think so. There's, there's, there's behind the scenes photos, but there's also like, when color. you like, when you look at the back of like a VHS or something, it's in color. Like, I know yeah. that's probably colorized. The DVD is like that, which I have. Yeah. There's no colored version. Of this I don't though, think right? so. And, and if there is, don't, it's not worth, I wouldn't watch it because it would be, it would be colorized as far as I know. And that's always garbage. This movie looks phenomenal. I really noticed it. I don't know why, but I really noticed it when, when they're tracking the violin sound through the passageways and they get to like this staircase that kind of like spins down and they're against the wall. There's webs everywhere. You can see like the grain of the castle walls that they're in the steps. It just looks phenomenal. Not to mention the set pieces of the, what you just brought up, the original set pieces from Frankenstein. And that's so awesome to know that they're, those are the original ones. Yeah. That's crazy. What, let me ask you this. What year does this take place in? I would guess. I would say like the forties, but I don't, you know, like it really could take place in the seventies, I guess. I don't think so. I think it takes place. I think I've always looked at this movie as almost like a sequel to Frankenstein. Yeah. The Frankenstein. Yeah. The original, which was 31. I believe. And which would track that it was like his grandfather. Though. Exactly. That's why I looked at it like that. So maybe like, yeah, 10 years, 15 years later at most post uh, Frankenstein. Okay. Yeah. The other th- I mean, the other, the only other thing I have is uh, the ending with like, I, I don't know. I just, I've always loved this ending. Madeline Kahn, <clears throat> Madeline Kahn and the monster end up together. Up together. And they're living. Did, like, that, do you think that scene would get cut now? It would definitely be different. Why? I mean, she doesn't want to like put out like he. Oh, kind you're, of talking about, like, you're talking about him, the rape scene or what? Yeah. Kind of. I don't know. It's not really a rape scene, but no, I think you could still because she ends up enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't they definitely don't doesn't. shoot it the same way. Yeah. Where yeah. It's like she's not into it. She is telling him no, 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 no. no. And then. Yeah. You know. I think without it, you don't get the works, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but you don't get the ending without it, I think. I mean, you could you don't need the you know, she could just see it and be like, all right, I guess, you know, yeah, yeah. giant. She this is the first time I noticed where in the ending, she comes out with the Bride of Frankenstein hair Mm -hmm. and she's all into the monster D. Mm -hmm. But in the scene that you're talking about earlier where he kidnaps her, this is the first time I noticed that that's where she gets the two shocks of white. Like when she's laying on the ground, you can see she has two shocks of white in her hair. Yeah. I, I noticed I, that. That's too, the first time I noticed it. I didn't so, think that that's how she got it though. I think it is. Cause she didn't have that before. In the scene I guess before. you're right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's that, from the, the startle. I, I love, I love the monster when they live together. <laughs> the monster's in bed reading the, like, reading. the paper. He's yeah. reading the, I think it's Wall Street Journal. He's reading yeah. the paper and she's talking about like, I've got to be here. Don't forget, we've got to do this and this and this. And <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, okay. but yeah, no, but she comes <laughs> out, man. Bride of Frankenstein is my favorite of the Universal Monsters. It's, it's the best one. And when she comes out dressed like that, because I already thought Madeline Kahn is like, really attractive but when she comes out with the hair i'm like that's awesome (laughs) and the way she's like she's into it man you know and it's just great and then it cuts to terry gar and gene wilder 
And he's like, I guess he heard some music and he kind of like, that's where it clicks in what you were talking about earlier about, did he get some of his brain? I think he did. And he's all like, "Mm." yeah. And then it kind of mirrors that scene. And then the zoom in on his eyes. Like, I love that. It's just a great ending. Uh, Yeah. And then, which she, she ends up doing the same thing that Madeline Kahn did where her like moaning turns into singing and then mm-hmm. it flows into Marty Feldman on top of the castle, blowing a horn. Yeah, <laughs> that's how the movie ends. <laughs> I love it. I love that it ends with him. So it's, good. I mean, it's solid, man. It's a very so good movie. Good. Uh, what else you got? You got anything else? In- no, no. You know, it's such a good movie, man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we got to watch it. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to throw. Like it's one I don't throw in enough. And like I hadn't seen it in years, man. And it was really? like, yeah, it had been a while. And it, and again, it's one that like isn't i don't know there's there's movies that like not live in your brain but like that you know every line of you know every shot of and this one isn't one of those for me you know where like i have to yeah like yeah yeah like i have to remember it when i watch like oh yeah that guy's in this and stuff like that like you know whereas you know yeah men in tights and space balls i don't have that (laughs) you know yeah this i i quote this movie like regularly and in this, like I said earlier, this Ghostbusters and Breakfast Club, I'm always talking about. This is the one when I watch, uh, I don't know, this is the Mel Brooks movie that makes me wish or miss Mel Brooks movies. Like, because he didn't do a ton. No, it, it, I think it's, I think he only did 11 or 12. Yeah, I was going to say 10 movies, 11, whatever. And so, you know, when you watch those, I mean, his, his comedy is just, it's unique. It's not, you don't get it anymore. People don't, people aren't that creative with their, um, it's with their spoof. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a level of, and I don't mean, I love hot shots and airplane, but there's a, there's a different level of wit. He brings class to it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. One of my my favorite things I ever heard about Mel Brooks. Did I ever tell that story about Chris Hardwick? We can cut if I did. I don't know. Uh, Chris. So Chris Hardwick like collects horror stuff. He collects horror stuff or movie stuff. And I think I've brought up that he collects like like he has yeah. a Reagan and all this. Stuff. He bought the hel- the helmet from he bought it from Spaceballs. He bought Dark, the dark helmet. helmet. Yeah. yeah, he bought the helmet um and owns it. And he's friends with Max Brooks. Okay. And he went to Max Brooks and said, Would you think your dad would sign it? And he was like, Yeah, would if we if we bring it over to the house, he'll probably sign it. <laughs> so they brought it over to the house and he was there. And he goes, hey, you know, I'm a big fan of this. This, this. Would you mind signing it? He goes, yeah, uh, five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> he made him, he made him give him five dollars, awesome. and he kept the, and he kept the five dollars. <laughs> That's awesome. It's such not a, a not a hundred bucks, not a hundred bucks, not not, not, no. not joking a, a dollar. It's five bucks. That's it, awesome. And it's and he's Mel Brooks. Like he's got more money than God. And yeah. It's not even. It's it's like what is like that's. It's it's, so good. Man. It's gold. It's just, you know what I mean? I saw, I saw a, um, when the pandemic was at its height, Max Brooks went to visit. I don't know what, it, what this was on. It, was, it must've been like a talk show or something, but late night, but, uh, he went to visit his dad. And it was Carl Reiner. Uh, I don't know, but it was, oh, when, sorry, sorry. It was when they, it was when you couldn't stand next. You couldn't be around old people because of the pandemic. And so Max Brooks, I just remember the video was him standing on one side of a glass sliding glass door at Mel Brooks's house and Mel Brooks being on the other side. And there was some joke going on there, but it was just, it was just because I love Mel Brooks so much. I loved that Max Brooks was protecting the gem of a man that Mel Brooks is at this time when we needed to do that. Do you, I was, and I was going to ask like, are you a Max Brooks fan? I never read any of his books. Um, and I was ready to be like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. But like, he did multiple interviews on Hardwick's podcast back in the day. Yeah. And I, yeah, I was like, I just like him as a, as a guy he talked about all the time. He's like this every day. Like I wake up, I drive my dad over to Carl Reiner's house and they watch <laughs> fucking TV. Yeah. This is when Carl Reiner was still, I mean, that went on for decades. Yeah. He's like, they watch TV from this time until like eight o'clock at night. And then I pick my dad up and I bring him home. And it was yeah. just like, and they did it every day. And like, there's a bunch of like shit. Like, I think they did a comedians in cars uh, with coffee and they like whoever they're doing was like, you want to stop and talk to Mel Brooks? And they just go to Carl Reiner's house and they're both there and they're just watching TV. <laughs> and they're like, go to Carl Reiner's house. and they, yeah, they go to Carl and they're both and they're, they're just hanging out. Yeah. And it's just like it, it, that that was like when Carl Reiner died, 
that was like the, my first thought was that I was bummed for Mel Brooks. Oh, big time. Yeah. Cause it's his best friend. He hangs out with him every single day for yeah. fucking 30 years. You yeah, know, that's hilarious. Out of choice. Yeah. You know, um, I'm a, I love Max Brooks. He, I, I found him through the zombie survival guide. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. It's not a story. It's a little literal survival guide, on how to survive the zombie apocalypse. And I later found out, and then he also wrote world war Z, world war Z. Which is a phenomenal book. The movie is also good, but not the book. It's not, it's totally different. But I found out later through, I used to be a big um, Bill Maher fan and he would have Max Brooks on all the time. And Max Brooks actually, when he wrote the zombie survival guide, he was writing that from a perspective of like literal what would happen. And the United States army employs Max Brooks to do these weird little training days of what would happen in a zombie apocalypse, like outbreak from time to time, because the training for that turns out you can apply it to so many different scenarios. On top of that, Max Brooks is one of the most intelligent people I think I've ever heard speak. And then you add in he, how much he adores his dad. And uh, he seems like a really cool guy. Yeah, he, his his but he definitely doesn't have yeah. any of the comedy that his dad. No, yeah, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, but he totally he is, he's charismatic in his own sure. way. Yeah, uh, his Hardwick interviews are good. I man, I, I got a real soft spot for Hardwick. I haven't listened to him in years. He's solid. He's just he's just he kills you with like positivity. Like every interview he has. You've never seen uh, Talking Dead. I I mean I did I we I watched it the first couple of seasons. I only made it two seasons in Walking Dead because he still does that. He does Talking Dead. He does it for all three shows, all three dead shows. And now he does it for another AMC show. So he's like AMC's guy. Yeah. He's, so I, I, I see mean, him all the time. He's, he, I tell you what, when I like Kevin Smith, but when Kevin Smith is like, he's annoyingly positive about things. You Kevin know what I mean? Well, he's, yeah. He's yeah. a shill to the extent of a shill. Yeah, exactly. And it's annoying. Yeah. And I, even though I like Kevin Smith, it's like, you know, you're allowed to like voice like yeah. negative opinions about something. Yeah. Whereas like Hardwick is 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 it's kind of the same thing except it's not annoying. It's just like it's more genuine. It's just nice, you know. It's yeah. it's I don't know. Which is funny knowing where he came from. Like back in the M- MTV days, like doing singled shitty, out shitty shows, you know. Yeah, singled out. Jesus Christ. He's in house thousand court. He's like best friends with Rob Zombie. He was like in his wedding and stuff. Weird. I wonder if he'll be in the monsters. No, he's he he he's like I'll never act again because he's he's in House of a Thousand Corpses and he's really bad at it. Yeah, he's terrible. <laughs> um, all right, man, Young Frankenstein, we we good on that? Yeah, we're totally good, man. Cool. Yeah, yeah it was that's a that's a good good movie. I know this is a more of a greatest hits for that movie, but what do you do when when you love something so much? That's all it is. Yeah, it's why uh, you know. So next uh, next week we got you got the letter Z, and we kind of did some research on that before because it's. Not as easy of an of a letter that as you would think. You know, I didn't think about it when we were doing that, but it wasn't in any of the lists when we were looking. But none of Romero's later movies fall into that. They're all nope. day or day of something, right? Or yeah, day. they're all either Day of the Dead, Diary of the Diary Dead. Diary of the Dead. What's the one where with uh with Hopper with Dennis Hopper? Isn't that Day of the Dead? No, where they pump no where they pump gas and use machine guns. Oh, that's Land of the Dead. Land yeah, of the Dead. I'm sorry. Dead. Yeah, yeah. That's too bad. None of those have zombie in it because I would love to watch those. I mean, I mean, last year, yeah, we or last season we went with Zombie High, which was Zombie High is awesome. It's, <laughs> it's one of the, it's one of the best vampire. Uh... You mean like vampire? <laughs> <laughs> so this week for Z or the, for this season for Z, what do you got? I uh, found a movie from 1987 uh, that I've never seen before. Um, Neither have I. Could be a real crap shoot. It's called Zombie Nightmare. It's got Adam West in it. It's got Tia Carrere. Come on. From Wayne's World. Come on. Uh, it's got a 2.5 out of 10 on IMDb. It, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It'd be fun, you know? Yeah, awesome. I was trying to think what else what else is Tia Carrere in besides Wayne's World? True Lies. True Lies. And I'm pretty sure she's in a Brandon Lee movie pre-Crow. Is it Dragon? No, it's called like... Wait, uh, is he... No, wait, he's not in Dragon, is he? No, I don't know. Something else. Anyway, T. Career. She used to be the bomb. She's not anymore. But and Adam I West. She, I bet dude. she's still uh I bet she's still uh yeah. pretty uh yeah. Adam West in a zombie movie, it's gotta be good, dude. What do you want to bet? He's not he's like in it what, for five minutes. <laughs> he tells some chick to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you think they utilize their Adam West? Like I don't know. 
I have a feeling they might in this one. I think we might be in a, for a surprise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna bet they don't. Look at that post. Look at that poster though. That poster is great. Wasn't it One Dark Night? Yeah, One Dark Night. That's what it That's was. That's what it was last season for O. Uh, the Adam West vehicle. I mean, it's got to be. It's got to have better effects. Yeah, right? it's got to be better. I think it'll be good. I think we're in for a treat. So next week, <laughs> letter Z, uh, Zombie Nightmare. That's what was uh, that? Nineteen eighty-seven. Uh, Nineteen eighty-seven. Uh, yeah. She is also, by the way, she's in uh, Jury Duty and uh, and High School High. High School High, folks. High School High. She was never a Bond girl. All right. High School High it is. Uh, <laughs> I saw that in theaters. High School High? I've never heard of it. Never heard of it? No. <laughs> it's like a spoof of like Dangerous Minds. It's oh, like okay. oh, uh, okay. stars John Lovitz. All right. That's why I never saw it. I, I can't stand John Lovitz. But I, um, love, I love John Lovitz. What else you got? You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, man. Uh, social media, find us. Instagram at Death by Podcast. You want to support the show directly? Yes. Patreon.com slash Death by Podcast. That's where you're going to find our second bonus mini podcast, Kevin. It's called Boob Tube TV. And this week we did Tales from the Crypt, season two, episode 10. What was the title of that? I don't think we said that. In the I don't, you know what? I have no idea what the title was. I have it right here. It's called The Ventriloquist's Dummy, which makes sense. Considering. Yeah, good title. Good title. The Ventriloquist's Dummy. Excellent episode starring Stan. Don Rickles and Bob Keck Goldthwait. Ah! Kind of like Pee-wee. It's kind of like a weird Pee-wee version of Pee-wee. Anyway, uh, yeah, Patreon. Check us out. Behind the scenes, you got the, the BoobTube TV podcast. Patreon.com slash Death by Podcast. And if you enjoy the show, tell people about it. That's all. Just tell people about it. With that, I'm your host, Adam. That's your other host, uh, Kevin. It's Miller time, Kevin. Shut the fuck up. Oh, it's good, man. You're getting good at it. You got that trigger, the trigger finger. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Go watch some stuff. Be cool. Eat your greens. What? There was something else. What else? No? Any other fruit? Sauerkraut is good for your digestive system. Adios. Adios.